Tonight, we'll explore the government's latest efforts in tackling the long-standing issue of shanty towns, with demolitions scheduled all over the Bahamas, a move aimed at enhancing living conditions and compliance with national standards. But what does this mean for the residents and the broader community? Additionally, we'll get a comprehensive update on the roadworks projects sweeping across our islands. Join us as we pave the way to understanding these initiatives right here on the record. Stay tuned as we break new ground with the Ministry of Works. Our show begins on the other side this spring. With us in studio, the Minister of Works and Family Island Affairs, the Honorable Clay Sweeting, along with Damien Francis. He's the Deputy Director at the Ministry of Works. Gentlemen, welcome to On the Record. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Thank Minister, you. let's start with you. You are at Ministry of Works due to a portfolio change. So tell us a little bit about, you know, you're on a new job, <laughs> so to speak. How has it been like? What are some of the things that you've been doing, you know, in these months since you have, you have been moved over to this ministry? Yeah, so... Um, thank you, Jomar, again for having me on the show. Uh, as uh, ironically, it's been almost a year um, since Not a long, September. Right? Wow. Okay. Um, last year. So. All right. Okay. Um, but I think, as you can see, um, the Ministry of Works has uh, been aggressively attack tackling various issues in regards to road repairs, uh, drainage, um, unregulated task force. Um, so we're taking overall approach on on where we want to go and been very direct and trying to get the things accomplished in regards to family island development, uh, New Providence development, and the holistic approach um, to what the mandate for the Ministry of Works is. Now, I have to say this, um, and, you know, as a journalist, we pay attention to things. You've really raised the profile of the ministry. You all are busy. You're doing a lot. But what I find interesting is you are really taking time to inform the public about what you are doing. Why is that so important? Well, you know, especially being from the family islands, I think that um, people want to know what's happening, you know. Um, so in these small communities, so we're taking the same approach in New Providence, especially if you have business communities such as Daswell Street where we're doing extensive drainage works and road repairs. It's important that the general public um, is quite aware uh, days in advance to try to make, the, make it as less uncomfortable as possible. Uh, because, you know, you do disrupt some traffic. So we do have traffic management and all of this. And also at the time slots um, to try to, person's going to work, to start work after, try to finish before. So we've been very, very good with that um, in regards to our public re relations department that we've built a lot of capacity. Um, and, and the whole ministry's approach to how we integrate the different departments that work along with the public relations is, is where you'll see that change happening in that regard. Now, Minister, I can show off for just a minute. Your PR department is so good because you have two of my former reporters. <laughs> so I am going to say thank you. And I, I know that they would yeah. do a good job uh, there. So I, job. I appreciate you, you know, bringing them, but they are doing a good job. And uh -huh. I'm just saying that because, you know, they might be, but yeah. they are doing a good job. <laughs> All right. Mr. Francis, I want to talk a little bit uh, really about the role of, of the, in your role as deputy director, how are you supporting the work really of, of the ministry and the minister? Okay, so uh, when the minister came in, we identified that the road network in New Providence is in terrible shape. We listen, all know what I, the... I, listen, we need a whole... <laughs> anyway, I, <laughs> I had to talk with the people, but I, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up, and we're going to talk extensively, but go ahead. So the minister came with a, an, an aggressive approach to attack the issues that we face. Um, basically, the public, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, experience um, terrible riding conditions. So... We identified a, a list of roads that need to be attended to. 
we have three categories of roadway, roadways in New Providence. We have arterial roads, which are your main roads like JFK, uh, Tonique Williams Darling, East West Highway, which are the main roads in New Providence. You have the collector roads, which take you from your communities to those uh, material roads. And then we have the local, what we call the local roads, which are your subdivision roads. Pretty much uh, most of our local roads and collector roads are in very poor condition. The arterial roads are also approaching um, their service life. Some of them have gone beyond their service life. So we've, we came up with the plan to um, address the road network within a two to two and a half year period. And the first uh, set of contracts uh, are coming up um, to be uh, engaged, and we'll be rolling out those contracts with small contractors. Um, but we also have a, another approach, which is the Ministry's Bahamics um, Asphalt Plant and Paving Company, and they will be undertaking those works, um, also on the arterial roads. So that's our approach to um, trying to repair these roads that are in poor condition. When you said we had three types of roads, I'd also say good, bad, and worse. <laughs> <laughs> but I thank you for, for clearing that up. I, I, we'll start with the roads first, because I think that is the thing that probably gives people the most anxiety. And 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 you know, if you are if you are a, if, whether you're driving, you take public transportation. You know, you're on the roads every day. So, Minister, let's talk talk money first. And really, how do you prioritize? Because as far as I'm concerned, so many of our roads are in such a, a, a poor state. How do you prioritize from a financial perspective which roads you're tackling when? Right. So, as a multifaceted approach, the ministry does have um, AI technology that they have utilized um, to drive through the roads in New Providence. And what this does is it, it maps out which roads are... In, in terrible condition, like you say, those who are mediocre and those that are, are dri drivable. Um, so you do have that technology. So it helps the ministry really not by choosing areas of what persons may want to pay, but also it determines what needs to be paved. So you have a factual base assessment as well. Um, you also have members of parliament that uh, possibly have, have roads that... <laughs> you, you read my mind. You know, <laughs> Next question. Yeah, okay. that that um, they would deem uh, a necessity for them in, in their constituency. So we do also take that into account as well um, to help them as they represent uh, their constituents. And that's because so, sometimes it's the people on the ground that tell you what's more important to them than what sure. uh, this technology would tell you. So, so you merge the two and um, you, you pave as much as you can. We've actually, this year will be, we should uh, double the amount of road that, that we pave in any other year. Um, usually the ministry pays between 15 and 20 miles per annum in New Providence. Um, we anticipate to probably do around 60 to 65 um, for the next two years and to try to get as much roads paved as possible. I mean, anyone who's traveled through Nassau in the past few months should have seen um, a much more aggressive approach to patching and road paving. I, I see this just this morning on my way to Starbucks, mm -hmm. I noticed you were paving out on Cable Beach. Mm -hmm. um, I, I appreciate that. I, I know that there are a lot of roads, but you know, that that's a well-traveled road, so I'm sure the folks out there appreciate that. So Mr. Francis, I'm, I'm going to ask though, yeah. how, you know, you, you mentioned the different types of roads and, and you know, how is it, you know, are, are these roads just being paved or is there some reconstruction going on as well? Because as we've seen in the past, They'll come and patch a few holes, do this. You know, once the rainy season is over, holes are back, roll back to the same condition. Yeah. So patching is essentially a temporary solution. Um, what we're going to do is uh, what, what we term mill, which is take off the existing asphalt, mm -hmm. inspect the condition of the road. So some areas will have to patch them. And then we do an overlay of asphalt, which is a standard uh, method of uh, paving in, in New Providence. Mm -hmm. And generally, you know, when we look at the, the condition of our roads. Are, 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 are roads really in need of reconstruction in many instances, or have we just gotten to this place because of poor maintenance? So it's, it's a combination of uh, a number of factors. Uh, drainage, basically water, mm -hmm. is the enemy of our roads. So whether it's uh, groundwater coming up into the, ba the Lion Rock base, or rainfall where we have ponding, and that affects the life of the, um, of the roadway. But in addition to, uh, to um, that, Cutting an, a, a new, a, not a newly paved road, any paved road reduces the service life. So when you, if you have a trench that's, that's cut into the roadway, you go in and patch it, it's, that trench is only last so long. Um, so the, the, the intent here is to is provide a pavement that's going to serve you at a minimum 5, 7 to 15 years life 
um, lifespan of um, productivity to the public itself. Now, Minister, do you, you know, do your folks, uh, are they talking to the utility companies? Because mm -hmm. there is nothing, <clears throat> nothing pains a driver more mm -hmm. than a newly paved road. And then a few months down the road, some utility company is back in the road, digging into a space yeah. again. And now you've created this issue in the road that, you know, sometimes we aren't even on it for about a year. So uh, uh, do you have that inter-ministerial uh, discussion and, and or even utility companies talking to you when those roads are being repaired about what needs well, to be done. Well, there's not an interministerial, but you do have the technical persons that speak to um, water and sewage. Yeah, and that's be, what I meant. Sorry, so that's yeah, my gaffe. I, yeah. I meant by the, what I meant is the utility companies. Yeah, they speaking, do. Yes. So um, if you would have noticed Eastern Road, when we went to pay, we went to pave that uh, a few weeks prior than we started. And the reason being is that Warden Sewage wanted to do some extensive work there. BPL wanted to do some extensive work there. So we don't want to, like you say, come back and have to dig up a road um, because of that. So for the Ministry of Works, we do all that we can to prevent that. Um, sometimes uh, they, uh, they come behind to fix an issue. But in regards to uh, improving their infrastructure, we ensure that let them know that we're going to pave this area. Is there any work that you need to do prior to the Ministry of Works paving these roads? So we do do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And does that does that help? Does that work? Because you know, for 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 Joe Public, all we see is road paved and yeah. dig up. Yeah. yeah. So for the most part, um, the coordination works. <clears throat> um, but you do have. I mean, it would be realistic. That there may be instances, particularly with water, you're going to get leaks mm -hmm. um, from time to time, and those leaks need to be repaired. So that's an unfortunate situation. If the if the pipe is under the ground. There's always that risk. Um, but in terms of collaboration, uh, uh, we're planning to pave uh, works on uh, Joe Farrington Road. And as part of that, we collaborated with WSC. They will provide the uh, material, the pipe, and your 10 inch main. Um, and then we will uh, cover the cost to install it. And then we'll go in and mill and pave. Minister, you mentioned something um, about, you know, paving these roads and doing the, the, doing the work around a specific time. I remember when the ministry announced that they'd be doing something on the Eastern Road and it caused a huge uproar mm -hmm. because of the timing. Mm -hmm. And you all came right back and adjusted the time. Yeah. But that, that was obviously very deliberate. Yeah, of course. I mean, um, sometimes, you know, and, and no scenario is always going to going to be perfect because especially Eastern Road, where it's, you just got the dual carriageway and mm -hmm. it's where you have a lot of persons traversing from us. It's, that it's area. always busy. So um, it's never going to be a perfect scenario. But what, what, we, what we do at the ministry is we try our best to accommodate. At the same time, the work has to be done. So you still got to, you know, you can't work three hours a day and then you prolong, you do, it takes you three months to do work that you could have done in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So you try to compact it um, and, and with the same mindset taking. So when we seen those issues, um, we were very quick to try to change the timing to adjust. That one hour made a big difference for the persons. I mean, it still was a little frustrating, but now the road is paved and, you know, persons are, you know, are happy about it. Help us understand what the targets are and where you are in, in, in getting it. You mentioned the amount, of, um, the amount of miles of road that mm -hmm. you want to do. So where are you now in terms of, of hitting those targets? I think we pr we're pr pretty much on schedule. Mm -hmm. um, we continue, um, as uh, Assistant Director spoke about milling and paving, the milling part is a much quicker exercise instead of reconstructing road. Um, the contracts that we are supposed to issue will be um, for the first time, I think, in a while, because most of the time, just the government bar mix dust paves roads in New Providence. So to capitalize and, and help to um, get some of the work done much quickly, we have hired lo seven local contractors mm. that will be um, doing the, the roads throughout this, the inner communities for the most part. Um, and we'll continue in that exercise. So we're engaging um, seven local contractors um, to ensure that they are part of the process. And so it's, it's a different formula, and that's how we're going to get a lot of this work done. I, I have to say, I'm mean, amazed that we have seven companies that are doing that kind of work. I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so th those companies range in size. So we have some companies that are uh, sort of medium-sized companies and then others that are smaller. But what the ministry does to, to um, assist is we, prov we mill the road because we have the equipment. The Milling mill is when you just sort of like scrape, scrape off, it. I call yeah. it scrape it. Right. Okay. So that's, right. a that's a very expensive piece of equipment. So mm -hmm. the uh, Bahamics has a milling machine. 
So we will mill and the contractor will come in and, and, lay, and supply the asphalt from Bahamix and deliver it to the site and lay it. Yeah. So we create opportunities at the same yeah, time for definitely. persons yeah. who are not as large as uh, um, large, larger companies, paving companies in the country. All right, gentlemen, we have talked extensively about road work. I could say that I know about road works all day, but I know that there's so much more that you do, and we want to delve into that. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to switch gears slightly as we look at some of the work that's happening within our family islands. This is On The Record. We're back right after this. And we are back. We're also still with the Minister of Works and Family Island Affairs, Clay Sweeting, along with Damien Francis, the Deputy Director of the Ministry of Works. Gentlemen, I want to talk a bit about the Family Island portfolio and what that involves. We spent a lot of time on road works, but let's talk about some of the work that you're doing in the Family yeah. Islands. Yeah, so um, we're continuing with a lot of the road works in the Family Islands as well. Uh, we're in Long Island now, um, paving a part of that, and then we, we should start with Stella Mars. I think they started yesterday mm -hmm. towards Stella Mars. Uh, Eruthra, uh, we have a PPP arrangement um, with Farmer Stripen where they're paving 163 miles of road. So this will be the first time um, in history that Eruthra has a massive road paving exercise where from Benhamon Town to Atchet Bay um, will be paved in this initial and then we'll con hopefully continue um, to north. I have to ask, what are the differences in paving uh, and in doing these works in the family islands versus in New Providence? To begin with, I know the family island people are nicer and are probably more accommodating. <laughs> we can take that off the table. Yeah. What are, what are, the, are there different challenges uh, depending on the area? Yeah, it depends on the location. So mm -hmm. delivery of materials, um, of aggregates, for example, can be a challenge in certain islands uh, because you don't have sufficient um, access to docks and so on. Um, also, one of the benefits of the family islands is less traffic you have to deal with. Um, so, um, when you're in New Providence... And the people are nicer, you could yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. In New Providence, you have to deal with the traffic issues, uh, the mm -hmm. volume of traffic. Um, and on the family islands, it's, it's much easier to, to manage your traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the family islands, again, you also have uh, resource challenges. Um, sometimes you'll have to mobilize people to come in, and then you have to provide accommodation. But then again, that brings in... Uh, an improved economy to the family islands, so people are spending so they money. Have to, they have to yeah. eat, they have mm -hmm. to live. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So th those are the typical <clears throat> issues. And then another issue is um, managing the projects from the ministry side and in terms of supervision. Um, on some of the family islands, we don't get um, adequate time to actually have someone there full time, so it's more of a periodic inspection. Um, so those are the challenges. New Providence, you come out of the ministry, you go to the site, you inspect. On the family islands, you have to arrange a visit to, to that island on a specific day or week or whatever. So I just want to put it out there. If you need someone to go to the family islands, I'm available. I can <laughs> stay as long as I can do the show virtually. You know? <laughs> so, Minister, you, you mentioned, though, this public-private partnership mm -hmm. um, for the work in Eleuthera with yeah. Bahamas Striping, a yeah. group of companies. I want to talk about that uh, because what you're talking about now is, is an opportunity for a local company to do massive work that probably a foreign company may have done yeah. previously. So I want to talk about that arrangement. Right. So, so I mean, and that part's exciting to have uh, young Bahamians um, be a part of a massive undertaking and also where they're working along with local companies. So we do have uh, two local companies that pave in the mm -hmm. And instead of Bomber Striping just doing all of the work, um, even though they don't have the equipment to pay with the hot mix, they can do the base work. So they've been engaged to do all of the base work on Eruthra. So um, there again, the money stays in the local economy um, and helps to assist in that way. So, you know, it's a, it's a partnership, not just with the government, with these young Bahamians who um, went to the market, found the funding to do this PPP, but also to engage persons on the ground to be a part of, of the exercise. Sure. So, um, you know, aside from a great driving experience, which is what these roads primarily do, how do the improved roads really affect the economy and the quality of life on these family islands? 
Yeah. So when you look at uh, the family islands and development in general, infrastructure plays a key role in getting investors to invest in these communities. Uh, persons from New Providence moving back, because when you got reliable infrastructure, then, then persons would want to live um, in these areas. So that plays a, a critical role, especially in Eruthro, where you have uh, Disney about to start. You have Cotton Bay um, that's starting to make great strides in, in their development. Uh, you have all of these developments. You have areas in governors um, with a large market with Airbnb. So uh, with development and uh, investment, you also need infrastructure to support that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, uh, Mr. Francis, I know that from the from the ministry's perspective, um, managing all of these islands and, and the various projects can be a challenge, I'm sure. Yeah, it definitely can be a challenge, um, but we do have a team that actually manages the projects mm-hmm. and they visit from time to time. Um, but what we've, uh, on the PPP projects, we have a, a consultant that's brought on board by the contractor, and they do the basic engineering and inspection works. Mm -hmm. So then we meet with them on a monthly basis um, in terms of a progress meeting, and then from time to time we meet with them uh, during the week. Um, But it's it's a challenge to to, to manage all these large projects. Sure, and again, you talked about Long Island and Eleuthera. Mm-hmm. Are there any other islands that are that are on radar as yeah. well or currently we'll, getting... We'll, we'll be doing some work in, in Abaco as well. Okay. Um, the Barry Island. Islands. Cat Island has extensive road work. Andrus has extensive road work in the north, central, and we are about to start uh, in the south, um, part of Andrus. Um, so we'll continue moving throughout, throughout the islands, and I, I think this probably will be the most massive undertaking of road paving nationwide mm-hmm. that this country has seen in, in a long time. Mm-hmm. And, and some of these uh, road paving works also include waterworks. So, for example, on, on Cat Island, it's just us paving roads. <coughs> um, we're installing uh, water mains throughout the whole island um, and also identifying areas where you may have flooding issues. Um, if there's uh, capacity to raise the road, we'll do that um, to make sure these roads are sustainable and accessible after, say, a heavy storm event or hurricane passing through. Mm-hmm. Are there any other things, uh, you know, within your, your portfolio on these islands that contribute to economic development and, and the improvement of, and the betterment of life on these islands? Right. So, so the Ministry of Works is also the, the conduit for all other ministries. Mm-hmm. So uh, if we want, if aviation wants to build an airport, um, Ministry of Works would help to facilitate that, such as uh, Governor's Harbour Airport, um, for the first time, it's undergone massive renovation where it's almost a, a brand new airport and which helped to facilitate American Airlines flying into governors for the first time in 20 years. Um, and it's a jet, they bring in their jet, not just a regular prop plane. Um, and from, I think the initial was two flights a week. Within a few weeks, they've now upped it to three flights a week. So this is where infrastructure plays a critical role in the development. So because we were able to build a new airport in Governor Sabo, we're now facilitating um, thousands of persons coming in to help drive the local economy there. So that's that's one area. And, and we continue, um, whether it's education or uh, administrative complexes, all of this, the Ministry of Works plays a critical role in helping develop um, other ministries as well. How do you, you know, or is there, I guess, a, a schedule um, that you have in place, let, let's get past roadworks for a minute, but in terms of assisting in these other in these other areas, infrastructure, government, building schools, et cetera, managing all of that, how, are you, how do you look at that holistically and say, okay, well, we're focusing on this first, that second, that third, or is it on an as-needed basis? Well, I, I think it's a combination of, of all of that. So mm-hmm. education would send a list of what they need done. We just provide a scope of works, we facilitate that aspect of it so because we have the technical capacity to do so. Uh, the same thing with the Ministry of Health. If they want to build a clinic or something of that, um, they would specify the need, and then we would facilitate that. So basically, we help to facilitate a lot of the infrastructure for all other ministries that wouldn't come under our um, portfolio. So, Give me... And I presume that takes a lot of, of technical know-how yeah. from within the ministry. Yeah, definitely a lot of technical know-how. We need to assess to see what resources we have in-house. Um, I'll put a plug in here. We need young Bahamian engineers 
to come back from Canada or UK or USA and come back and work into the Ministry of Works. Um, we have a lot of exciting projects and managing those projects can be a challenge because we're resource constrained, but we do um, have the, the technical know-how to de deal with these projects. So engineers are needed. <clears throat> Definitely needed. I wasn't too old to go back to school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I guess coming in, you know, from agriculture, um, where, where the focus was much different for you, um, has it been challenging making that, that, that switch? Not really. I mean, I, I enjoy both. I mean, you, when I was a former fisherman, so I used to... So be, I don't know if you can ever be like a former fisherman. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, commercially. All right. Commercially. Okay. Former, former commercial, commercial fisherman. fisherman. Like you, say, well, you got off a snowball? So, <laughs> but, but living in the family islands, sure. um, I think most of us, we actually play a, a role in building our own homes and construction, all of that, because it's not like New Providence. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that I enjoyed anyhow mm -hmm. in regards to uh, construction and, and all of that. So for, for me... It, it, it felt right in place, you know, we hit the ground running right off the bat. And when you have a, a good team, um, the ministry has, has an excellent team um, that helped to, to guide, you know, because sometimes they try to probably be more aggressive to get things done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no minister, not yet. <laughs> but but they're, they're, you know, when you have a good uh, team there to help to guide, because at the end of the day, the minister is only helps to drive with policy decisions, right? Exactly. So it's the people in the ministry that dri drives it. So once you have the right people in place and the right positions um, that share the same goals and, and excitement to get things done, I think that's one thing, a role of a, for me, a role of a minister is to, is to bring an excitement to, to the ministry, uh, to revive it, and, and then once everybody shares the same goals and focus and you get it done. I, I think you are spot on with that. I think sometimes... You know, it, the, the ministers themselves and even the public does not realize the role of the minister mm -hmm. um, versus the role of the ministry because the ministry is constant, yeah. you know, but the, but the minister will change. But I have to ask this just before we go to the break. You know, how much, uh, how, being a family islander, mm -hmm. um, how much of that really helped to change or to shape, I should say, um, you know, your, your perception of what needs to be done. I always say that Nasuvians are so selfish <laughs> because we see the Bahamas as just being Nassau and what we need and what we want. Um, but, you know, how much of your family island experience has really helped to shape your work within both ministries or more specifically within I, ministry work? I think, I think a, a lot of it because um, growing up in a family island, you don't have the same luxury of people in Nassau. That's so true. There's something as simple... When I was at, at the Ministry of Agriculture, something as simple as getting a fishing permit, right, was a hassle. It took you months to get it. Um, we digitized all of that so you could get your fishing permit online. At the Ministry of Works now, um, we have allocated for the next budget to digitize the Ministry of Works. So persons in the family islands who want to apply for their building plans will be able to do it online instead of putting it on the mail boat. Or having to come to Some, bring it. Or something getting lost, mm -hmm. having to, then having to fly here to check to see where your documents are. So mm -hmm. I think that aspect um, and, and has helped to mold that, that thinking, that train of thinking, even more so also to, to see the needs that the family islands, you know, deserve mm -hmm. and a lot of times um, don't get. So a, a lot of that, I think the ministry... The ministry also knows that Elusra is always on my mind. So, <laughs> so, so, so yeah. when they come with plans, they make sure that they, they yeah, Elusra, Elusra's going to be in the mix. <laughs> All right. Gentlemen, we're going to take another break. we got another interesting topic to, to discuss when we come back. We're going to look at the ministry's work within Shanty Towns and what has been happening over the last few months. So stay with us. This is On the Record. We are back from the break right after this. On top of roadworks and establishing proper infrastructure, potential digitalization of requests, the works team has been at the forefront of the demolition of shanty towns. Minister, we've seen multiple exercises. Let's talk more about this. It has been um, a very hot button issue for consecutive governments. We have seen lots of starts and stops, but for the first time um, that I can recall, 
Um, in my career and in my, in my time of doing this job, we have seen substantial movements and substantial works in um, really putting an end to these unregulated communities. Yeah, um, you know, Jerome, at the ministry, we have a unregulated task force that um, it's an holistic approach to dealing with uh, shanty towns. You know, this is multi-agency, multi-ministerial um, task force inclusive of the Ministry of Works, uh, Social <clears throat> Services, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Environment, uh, Defense Force, Police Force, Attorney General's Office. So we have a, a full combination of what has made this uh, so effective um, to ensure that all of these agencies play a, a critical role in making it happen. So the first thing is you're dealing <clears throat> with human life. Correct. You're dealing with people mm -hmm. who now have to be uprooted um, because they are in an unregulated community. How do you, you know, how do you approach that? Um, because it's an issue, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, you're breaking the law, there are health hazards, there are all kinds of things happening with, within these communities. Uh, but how do you approach that, but still maintain um, the, the human element in right. all of this? Right, so uh, of course it's not a perfect situation, a perfect scenario, um, but it's, it's the right thing to do. Uh, because you have persons building on stru building structures on property that doesn't belong to them mm -hmm. um, without building approvals, uh, where Bahamians have to get all of these approvals that take months to get. They have to purchase land and, and all of that. Um, but at the same time, you are dealing with individuals. That's why it's important that social services uh, play a critical role in how we approach uh, these shanty towns. So um, to give an idea of how it works, uh, you have, once we identify a shanty town, um, the task force goes in along with uh, social services, immigration. They take account of all individuals that live in the shanty town. Then they section them into groups, whether or not did they have a permit, um, who's their permit holder, uh, are these Bahamians, are they permanent residents? And if they are permanent residents or Bahamians, then social services will assist them in that regard. Uh, we've also put together a website where persons can populate with uh, rental properties. So that the persons in these communities who actually, for the most, time, for the most part, do have funding mm -hmm. um, because they're working, mm -hmm. uh, just like any other Bamian. And then these rental properties are populated so that these individuals can find somewhere if they are not a permanent resident or Bahamian um, or if they don't need the assistance. So you do that as well. Um, so, you know, you have this holistic approach to where we try to guide them and assist them, you know, and, and still at times you have persons who refuse assistance um, for one reason or another. Uh, so you, you do what you can and then, you know, you try to do the best. But at the end of the day, it needs to be done. Uh, the government is very firm on their stance on unregulated communities. Uh, even so that uh, I see that the Turks and Caicos Islands it's even uh, created a task force very similar mm -hmm. to ours and has started to take the same approach that we have in the recent, in past recent weeks. So, you know, um, <clears throat> for the most part, people believe that these unregulated communities or shanty towns or whatever we want to call them are populated by non-Bahamians and predominantly Asian. But from what you're saying, there are Bahamians who live in, in some of these well, communities well, as well. You, you do have persons that were born here. Sure. And that are now Bahamian citizens. They are Bahamians. I mean. and, and they are, so now they, they've been raised in these communities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it's not a large number, but do you, you do have Bahamians that live within <clears throat> these communities. Um, so you do have to take that approach because they are a citizen. But at the same time, we have to follow building codes uh, because they are a hazard. I mean, and when you look at Hurricane Dorian. Yes. And uh, as painful as it might be for some, right? This is also a preventative measure to if, God forbid, we have another storm, right? Uh, New Providence or any other family islands, then you help to try to prevent all of the deaths that, that happened in Dorian. Deaths, injuries. And, 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 yeah. and all mm -hmm. of that. So mm -hmm. um, there's so many different reasons that this is necessary. Um, for, for us to, to do. And, you know, we've been very firm um, in, in our approach. And, and I think for the most part, by now, the country should see that we're very, 
very serious. You know, it, it is. The, the message is you are very, very serious. Mm. But I want to talk about the family islands again for a minute. I want to just mm. sort of separate the two because in New Providence, the reality is there, there are more homes available and alternatives available. Mm. But this is a program that's now in the family islands as well, Abaco, et cetera. Right. You know, how are you managing in those communities where the options for alternative housing are not as readily available? Right. So um, we're in Iruthra now. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the most part, um, the communities that we've been dealing with, the permit holders has been, um, as, as they have the right, as they are supposed to do, has been providing uh, housing for them now. Um, in, in Abaco, uh, you had a, a, a similar scenario. Um, but for the most part, you even though on the face of it, you might say there's no housing available. You know that's what you hear leading mm -hmm. up to demolition. That, that's, all, that, that's always the human okay. cry from the community. Okay. Where are we going to house these people? Okay. So demolition started yesterday. Everybody has somewhere to stay. In Iruthra, we had today's the third day of demolition. All persons that live within this, these communities have found somewhere to stay. So sometimes they cry. And but and then you also look, say it's it's a uh, housing crisis. It it's a housing opportunity. So investors who want to build rental properties can now do that because now the people have to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they, the idea is and integration. And regulated the community. Right, right. So. so you want integration as well because you want people that live in this country to be a part of this country. It, it's interesting that you say that because, you, you know, we started talking about the fact that, you know, within these communities you have second, sometimes even third generation uh, Bahamians, people who are born here, who have, who have earned their, 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 who have gotten their citizenship. Um, but they've spent their entire lives in these communities, which is not always representative of the country. Right. But now you, you've changed it, so now you have to live within, live and operate within these regulated right. communities. And, and, and there's countries around the world that has performed a similar exercise in the past. Mm -hmm. And you have seen that it has strengthened not only their economy, but the the government sector as well, because now they are paying into NIB, paying into national health insurance, they, and and they are helping to share um, the 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 tax taxes that Bahamians have to pay, um, so that the services that they receive are also a part of what they're paying into um, things such as national insurance. So many of these unregulated communities have existed over many years That's correct. Um, and they didn't just pop up overnight they would have grown over a period of time so as you as you go in and, and you you eliminate these communities are you also ensuring that they are not returning or others are not popping up in other areas where they move from one area to the next right. I, so the areas that we, we've dealt with with demolition we the um, even though we don't have the capacity at the Ministry of Works um, the police force and other parts of the task force do monitor these areas. So there's no rebuilding? To rebuild in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you will have situations where persons may build. Um, and because the reality is you just don't have the capacity to monitor. But as we get a uh, person's report, we do deal with it. So this is a continued exercise. It isn't, it's, the problem didn't arise overnight, and the solution isn't going to be... Um, happen overnight as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why you have to be very, um, very direct in your approach and succinct and continue. It's, that's not, not something that you could deal with in two months and you could leave it. It's a continued um, process um, and that's why the task force, the team, will continue to do uh, what they, they need to do. What are the other islands on, on, on radar? You've spoken about Abaco and more recently, Eleuthera, but what other islands are, are on, on well, your schedule? Well, well, we have gotten reports. Well, we'll be back into Providence after Eleuthera. We have gotten reports of, of um, unregulated communities in Andrus. Um, we also have um, unregulated communities in Abaco. Uh, that is the most largest one that we haven't dealt with yet because of uh, the amount of persons that live in this community. Um, so, you, like you say, you still got to make sure that when you deal with it, that it's able to make sense, mm -hmm. and you're not just displacing people, um, right? So, so I mean, for us, it's not just about, and I want to reiterate, it's not just about knocking down homes as some people try to 
craft the message mm-hmm. because we do have an holistic approach to this. It's, more, it's about integration. It's about persons living in these communities um, and being a part of, of the wider vision for the Bahamas. You mentioned integration, and unfortunately, that has never been a part of the discussion in the past. And even those who have, you know, who have screamed about this for many years, tear them down, get rid of them, um, see the communities, but what about the people and what happens yeah. to them? So it's interesting that you mentioned that integration is a part of, of the program yeah. as well and not just displacement. Well, well you, like you say, you have Bahamians that live in these communities. You have uh, permanent residents that will forever live in the Bahamas. They'll mm-hmm. never move anywhere else. They're not going anywhere else. So, yeah. so for, for these persons that are here uh, with the right uh, permits or the right citizenships or permanent residents, it's important that they are also a part of the larger picture of being a part of, of, of Bahamian culture. Is it anything that happens with these communities once they have been demolished and removed? Uh, do the original owners, are you finding that the original owners move in and do other things or is it they just well, sit there? Well, um, for the most part in New Providence, it's been agricultural crown land okay. that we've dealt with. Um, so the land cannot be used anymore for for tilling the soil, but you could put containerized farms and stuff like that. Um, also other crown land. In Abaco, it was crown land. Now, in Eleuthera, which is a unique, um, you have persons on private property, mm-hmm. and then you have persons on commonage land, um, which belongs to the commonists and um, from Spanish Wells in, in one instance. So it's this would be the first time that we've dealt with property that isn't government-owned. Um, so, I mean, we do have some private properties in the province that we'll deal with in the future mm-hmm. um, that we have at home. Um, the owner of the property... Or, well, the, the, uh, the lease, the crown lease, um, that they have an issue is not being able to get. There, there are so people who always say, too, that sometimes the people who own these properties have allowed these things because they're collecting rent and all kinds that, of other things that's as well. That's true. So you do have instances, you do have persons on in the private private land where they allow these unregulated communities, uh, and then they collect per head, mm-hmm. um, not even per home. Per head? Per head. That's different. I so, didn't so, that. Wow. So... Um, it's, it's for some, it's a money-making uh, sure. scheme for them. Um, in other areas, persons is allowed uh, one home to build, and when they come back, there's eight. Um, so you have a, a lot of different scenarios mm-hmm. um, that may have costs, uh, but at the end of the day, for us, it's to get it right and you know to ensure that moving forward that... The persons that come into this country um, understand that we are serious about making sure that we are first class as a country and that we, we, we do it by the book. You know, Minister, you're quite right that I think sometimes we, we forget to remind people that at the end of the day, we are a country of laws, rules, mm-hmm. and regulations. Well, very quickly, our last question. We are, I, I know that. Um, you are, as many other ministries and ministers, are now looking towards the next budget period, mm-hmm. which will come up. You know, our budget debate is going to begin the, in, in June and moving to the new budget in July. Mm-hmm. But what kinds of things are you hoping um, for your ministry to be able to do within the next budget cycle come July? Yeah. So we, we look forward, like I said, to digitizing the ministry, mm-hmm. uh, which would help to uh, allow persons to get approval. Our goal is to get approval for building plans um, in less than 60 days for individuals. Sometimes it, right now it takes six to eight months or, or even longer, wow. especially persons in the family islands. So we have to cut down on that, cut down on the red tape, um, to streamline the process. We also look forward to heavy investment in the family islands. Um, we'll continue. I've started that that trend. We'll continue. We'll continue with massive road works, drainage um, works, and and you know we'll we'll look at how we can help to build infrastructure even more. So. You'll see a lot of a lot of movement uh, within the next year as we uh, look to develop in, in, in different ways. Minister, I, I want to congratulate you really for a lot of the great work that you've been doing um, within the ministry. Uh, the fact that you're keeping the public informed about what you're doing, even the roadworks that we get angry about sometimes because we feel inconvenienced. But thank you. We realize that it's necessary work. So all the best to you, um, and keep up the great work. Yeah, and certainly we'll you. be you know we'll be. 
I'm quite happy to hear from you again. Next time, we want to come with you on the Family Islands, okay? Sound good. I can put that right yeah. out there. Yeah, my crew in there, my yeah, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. So, Minister, thanks again for joining us. We are grateful to both you and to Mr. Francis for stopping in and spending this time with us. Uh, if there is one thing we can admit, it's that the Ministry of Works is not just active but visible about the work they are doing. All the work this ministry has done to create the better Bahamas we, the people, not just want but need. So thank you to our distinguished guests and thank you to our loyal viewers watching On the Record. We'll see you 